hello everyone and welcome to today's special build that I bet you've never seen before. So what's on for today you may ask? A sanguine alchemy, when was the last time you used that exotic? If I last remember it has been since the Mars DLC was out and it was pretty popular back in the day until they made some changes. Since then it's been discarded and never really talked about or used until now. With Arc 3.0 and new weapons to use, we are going to expand on the exotics use and make it viable in today's content. If you want everlasting rifts and arc souls with a bit of warm cells here and there, then let me show you what I've got as I'm sure you'll enjoy this. But you know what else is keeping it old school? This channel right here, so if you enjoyed the video then I would really appreciate a like, a sub, a share and for you to turn on your notification as it goes a long way for me. For us to understand how the build works, we first need to understand the exotic origin trait. Blood magic allows users to pause their rift duration when getting a kill in your rift. Getting more kills will extend the pause duration. As we'll be staying in the rift constantly, it makes sense to combine it with a subclass that caters towards it well, such as Arc and Arc Souls. Let me show you what I mean. We have Arc Soul Aspect where creating a rift will produce an Arc Buddy for you. We then have Electrostatic Mind where defeating a baton with Arc Abilities or being jolted and blinded will create Iron Traces. For Fragments we have Spark of Magnitude where Storm Grenades last longer. Spark of Beacons where while amplified your special weapon kills create a blinding effect. Spark of Irons where defeating a jolted target to create Iron Traces. And Spark of Shock where your Arc Grenades jolt targets. For Stats we have 70 Resilience, 100 in Recovery and 80 in Discipline. For Key Mods we have Battleful Wealth for getting 2 Wells instead of 1. Warmind Protection where you get a damage reduction when enemies are nearby your Warmind Cell. Elemental Ordnance where using your grenade can make wells. Wrath of Rasputin where solar splash damage can create Warmind Cells. And Seeking Wells which allows wells to track to you. The idea I had in mind is that if we are going to be staying in our rifts a lot then we need to use items that will supplement that type of place out well. Using a mid to long range weapon and ideally a grenade launcher will be the best method of achieving this. And once you see me in action with this, you'll understand fully why the method I do is very effective for it. Your arc souls will be doing a lot of work as well, but do remember that we will be using our grenades as much as possible so we can become amped and enhance our arc souls for longer. It's a pretty basic build that expands on the current playstyle everyone's familiar with, but with an added twist to it. Now for weapons, we can pick and choose the weapons here since you won't be as mobile this time round. However, try and stick with a setup that suits the style of the build well. For example, I have this smite of Moran Pulse with Demolitionist and Adrenaline Junkie which can drop from the raid and is very helpful in terms of getting my grenade back faster and building up damage quickly as well. I will say this to everyone but this Pulse is one of the best primary weapons to get if you want a unique perk combo and some great roles for other activities. If I wanted to, I can swap to a version that has Firefly to it for helping me deal with add control or I can swap to another version with mini perks to keep me going etc. This is a weapon worth investing in heavily when using with the following build and you can also gain a lot from it in a short amount of time via its use. However, you may want to use an arc weapon instead so you can activate Harmonic Siphon more which is fine. So if you ever do then I would recommend this Sweet Sorrow AR as that has some fantastic perk combos as well. In secondary we have the Dead Messenger Grenade Launcher which is something you don't tend to see me use quite a bit but with the following build it's definitely worth it. You have the ability to switch to 3 different elements on demand which is helpful for when you don't want to keep switching weapons around to accommodate them. At the same time the weapon spread is much larger than most wave frames so you can net more kills in a small area easily. And most importantly you can create warmind cells with the build which I'm going to be playing a big part in providing as much damage and damage reduction thanks to the warmind protection mod. Although odd at first I thought it would make perfect sense to add in warmind cells to set up as you can freely switch to solo whenever you need to but also wells are already being used in the build so I don't see the point of adding on more elemental wells and make the build even more boring as it is. With my version you can pick and choose which cells you like on demand and whether you use it or not is entirely up to you. For stats you'll want to maximise your recovery rate to the least highest compared to everything else. As mentioned, rifts are your go to for the build so aiming for 80 to 100 is the key strength for allowing us to last long. If we go this pathway then I would recommend you add on the bolstering detonation mod for getting class ability energy back via grenades. Adding on Absolution is also helpful 
as although having maxed out is great, you're still going to be waiting a while until it kicks in. Now, if you do that, that should be all you need for the stat if you follow this pathway. You don't need to be more complicated than that. For your grenades, we can be lenient if you have the demolition perk available, such as my primary does. 70 to 80 is good, as we'll be relying on elemental wells and ionic traces for the majority of its use. But you can also add on the bomber mod as well if you feel like what you've got isn't just enough. Truthfully, if you have a primary with demo on it or a secondary and you use it a lot for net end kills, then you really don't need to expand on your mod choices anymore. I will say though that adding on the Ashes to Ashes mod will be helpful for getting our super up quickly. We also have Thunder Wisdom in use, but also Thunder is retort for that bonus super damage while amped. It's a great combo to use when combined with Chaos Reach, and you'll see a lot of this in action. We then at lastly have Resilience at 70, which will be combined with the Warmind Protection for even more damage reduction on the go. No further explanation is needed here. Leftover wise, we have Harmonic Siphon mod for creating orbs of power via matching arc elements, Machine Gun Scavenger mod for getting bonus ammo reserves, and Bad Amplitude, where damaging a champion with arc abilities causes them to be jolted. With that all covered, here's the list breaking it all down into a simpler form. Go ahead and pause this video so you can go ahead and take notes. For Head, we have Discipline, Harmonic Siphon, Ashes to Asses, and Battle Royale mod, Army of Recovery, Bolstering Detonation, and Warman Protection mod, Chest with Resilience, Firmation Plating, Cacus of Dampner, and Elemental Orders mod, Leg with Resilience, Machine Gun Scavenger, Absolution, and Wrath of Rasputin mod, Bond with Mind Resilience, Thunderous Retort, Bad Amplitude, and Seek and Wells mod. Utilizing Sanguine's effect of Extended Rift Duration, I have created the build design around sustainability in environments where you may not be moving around a lot. This could be for capturing areas or stopping combatants from pushing through, and it works a charm as well in higher tier content as well. So how does it work you may say? Using the healing rift we place down, we'll be using our weapons and arc souls to mow down anyone within our range and get a constant regen buff while staying within it. This here will allow us to keep our healing and arc souls for more longer than given and help clean areas up without much help. I have attached the dead messenger grenade launcher so we can utilize all my cells and get extra damage reduction for those nearest effect. Overall, you get a build that acts as a bastion to anyone pushing towards you, with severe firepower and defense to boot. Oddly, I haven't seen anyone talk about the exotic in name for a long time, and the exotic isn't bad as you might think. Although using rifts are helpful for keeping you alive, many people will opt into using solo instead and just use healing grenades for longer and on the go, for much better survival. This puts the exotic in a weird place as it's only really effective with arc souls with the synergy they provide. I have tried Void for the old god method instead, and that's viable as well, but it feels generally empty if your old god doesn't get anyone in infinity. Except from that, its viability is there and it's great for staying alive for long in one spot at a time, but why this isn't looked at or used is unknown and I feel like this exotic is slept on. It can be used in endgame and it works well in small to medium areas. It doesn't require a lot to make it work and its strength allows anyone a ease of using to use rifts a lot as their main build. I personally enjoy it as it works well and can be used non-stop, and although I enjoy Child of the Old Gods more, Arc Souls can do a lot of damage if focused on. Perhaps I'm not seeing something here, but do tell me what you think about the exotic and build as I would love to know why it lacks as much focus in game since its last update. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny stuff and banter. Once again thanks for stopping by, stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.